when we would see. <laughs> you think you got it? <laughs> I got a piece of it's a just, hair. It's just it was hair. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. fun. I'm sorry. I'm so out of breath. This whole video. I'm. I know you can't tell, but I'm pretty darn pregnant. <laughs> I've got like six weeks left, so running out of lung space. Hey guys, welcome to my very first parenting video. I know I look very young and honestly thank you for everybody who comments on my age. It gives me a little bit of an ego boost that I feel like I need, but I actually have almost a solid decade of experience with this parenting gig. I do want to say that I myself am not a speech pathologist, I don't have a PhD, I am not a BCBA, I don't have any sort of like concrete professional experience, but I myself have taken a pretty strong recreational interest in ABA, especially for parenting. And I've read a couple great books on it and I even took an elective course through Coursera and Yale. Um, it was like a five week program or something like that, all about parenting strategies using ABA, which is Applied Behavioral Analysis. And all of those things, the books and the program, was recommended to me by one of my best friends who does have her PhD and is a BCBA. So while I myself am not a professional, I'm also not just like pulling this out of my butt. If you are new here, I am a hairstylist by trade, so I do post industry-related things on this channel occasionally, along with all of your other favorite like YouTube mom style videos, so parenting, cooking, cleaning, day in the life, things like that, pregnancy, TTC, all that good stuff. So if you're into that, I hope you would consider subscribing to us. And if this kind of video in particular is what you like to see, definitely give it a thumbs up because I really do take those into consideration. I have so many things that I'm excited to share with you about parenting right on cue. <laughs> things that encourage desired behavior and prevent problem behavior from even happening. And in this video, I'm going to share our very favorite reward system, which is a token economy. I'll go over what it is, how to use it, how to implement it into da your daily life, and I'll even talk to Jackson a little bit and see his point of view on it. I'm not going to try and memorize all of this content and just speak freely because I don't want to mislead you in any way, so I am going to be referencing my notes quite a bit um, because I just don't want to get anything wrong. So a token economy is a point program, and point programs are a way to positively reinforce desired behavior through concrete praise and tangible rewards. So how to use it. Step one, you want to select a behavior that you want to increase. It's best to just start off with like one or two behaviors, but you can modify that to your children. With younger kids, definitely less is more. With older kids, at least for Jackson, I find that more is more, otherwise he would get kind of bored with it. Number two is choice of points. So are you going to do actual points? Are you going to do stickers? Are you going to do stars? Um, pick your points. Step three is to keep track of those points or stickers or stars. Um, I find it best for our situation right up there on the fridge. It is a bit of an eyesore. It doesn't really go with my kitchen like scheme and it makes my fridge look a little bit cluttered but you know what it's worth it and I find that he gets such a sense of pride when he is actually the one that gets to go and put the star up on the fridge and show it off to grandma and grandpa because it's right there in the middle of the room and everyone can see it and it, it gives him a sense of pride. Step four, specify earnings by behavior. So how many stars does he need or she need or how many stickers or how many points before they can cash it in for their prize? And number five, the funnest part is to pick the rewards and get your kids involved in this too. I asked Jackson what he wanted his rewards to be. Um, I had him involved in the whole process and that's great for your kids to ask them if they want points or stickers or stars, what color, what shape, character stickers, etc. So how I use it for Jackson. Jackson is going to be 10 this spring, so he's 
I would consider an older kid. I mean, he's not quite preteen yet, um, but he's an older adolescent. Our star chart is a little bit more complicated than you would use for like younger kids. For Jackson, we have those stars that only my husband and I can give, only Derek and I can give when we see him doing something we give him a star for it. And then we also have stars for things that he can earn. So if he's working towards a goal, we don't want him to use his behaviors as he's just doing it to get points. So I wanted to have a resource in there for him for when he is working towards a goal that he can do other things in order to get there instead of just like faking politeness, you know what I mean? So. Um, if he's working towards a goal, we have certain tasks that he can do, like make his bed, um, ask if we need anything done for us, that's called a good deed star. We have make a healthy snack, pack his lunch, things like that. We have stars for those too, so he can use those things to um, get points and work towards a goal as well. I don't think this is the traditional way of using it. But it's working for us because I he's never come up to me and after he's like been polite or something and I didn't offer him a star, he's never been like, can I have a star? I was polite, did you see? Because he has other outlets that he can use to earn a star, if that makes sense. So for our choice of points, we use stars, obviously. <laughs> and I label the stars. So I want him, for when he steps back and look at his chart, I want him to see everything that he's done to earn those stars. So I have stars that are labeled kindness star, politeness star, waiting to speak star, things like that. Um, because if he were to do all of these behaviors and then stand back and look and just see blank stars, it would be hard to make the connection between, oh my gosh, I got all of those stars because I was... Um, polite because I was kind because I waited my turn things like that if you're only doing Focusing on one behavior then you don't really need to do that because all the stars mean the same thing But since we don't want Jackson to get bored. He's a little bit older. We've got lots of star things going on I have labeled the stars so he can um, Step back and see all of the ways that he got to what he has so whenever I see Jackson doing a good behavior, I make it special. Now Jackson is nine, so I don't get overly enthusiastic because at that point it can kind of be off-putting towards kids. Um, they are kind of like, don't treat me like a baby sort of thing at this age. I moved that pillow because I felt like it was focusing on the pillow and not me, but I couldn't really tell. Um, so I take Jackson aside, I get down on his level, and I do make it special, just not um, super enthusiastically like you would make it special for a four-year-old. So making it special for a nine-year-old is actually a little bit more subtle. So I pull him over to me and I get down on his level and whatever he did, I make sure to name it specifically. I thank him for acting that way and I give him a hug or a pat on the back or something like that and then I tell him please go ahead and put a star up on the fridge. And then for our rewards, I have a, since we have several behaviors going on and several rewards going on, I have stars next to each reward showing how many stars you need to cash in that reward. And it's really important to have things that they can cash in right away really easily and things that they need to like work up and save up to. This is Jackson, and it is, what kind of day is it today? What, what do you mean? Is it a school day, or? Nope, nope, school is canceled. Yeah, it's a snow day today, so he's home with me. And we're just going to talk to him a little bit and get his thoughts on the token economy, star chart, reward system, Wait, whatever you want to call it. token economy? That's the professional name for it, yeah. Um, so, Jackson, if you, in your own words, could explain to everybody what a star chart is. How you use it? Okay. So, um, the star chart is when I do something good, like I'm polite, um, I earn a politeness star. And if I get a certain amount of stars, I earn a reward. Perfect. <laughs> good job. That was very well said. 
Um, do you like the star chart? Do you like using it? In fact, yes, I do. Would you be sad if we didn't use it anymore? Yes. Yeah? You would miss it? I want to keep it. Okay. So star charts are a win? Are a win? Are a win. Star charts are a win? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, for me, I might need to move for this last thing. Okay. Okay. Yep, good one. Thank you. You're Here welcome. you go. Love you, mommy. Oh. Love you too. So how I would modify this for younger kids, two, three, four year olds, is I would select just one behavior um, to start out and then add maybe a second behavior, but I probably wouldn't go much farther than that. Because with Jackson, I can encourage him on multiple different things and he can still kind of keep track of it but for younger kids if you're rewarding them on like 50 different behaviors they're not going to make the connection to those behaviors it's just too overwhelming too stimulating you still want to attend to all of those desired behaviors but the one that you really want to amp up pick that one for your reward system and make it special Tip number two for younger kids is to make the rewards really obtainable. Otherwise, they're not even going to try it. They feel like they're never going to get there, they're not going to try, or they're going to say it's too hard, or I don't care, or I don't want that, um, and it's not going to be successful. Another tip for younger kids is you definitely want to make sure you name it every single time. So maybe you want to encourage sharing. So if you were if they were to share and you were just to say good girl good job go put a star up on the fridge they might not necessarily know what they did to earn that star so definitely say instead of good girl or good job say good sharing great sharing name it every single time so they can make that connection that sharing is what got them the star so let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting if it's not working for you try these things before you just toss out the program altogether because it really is a fantastic tool to have if you can customize it to work really well for your family it really does work wonders so tip number one if it's not working try simplifying it either demand less um, so if you have been focusing on two or three behaviors maybe go down to just one um, and make the reward more obtainable so instead of having to earn 10 stars for something, maybe cut that down to five stars, like really simplify it. Also, you might want to up the ante. Maybe the rewards that you're offering just aren't reinforcing enough. Um, maybe, maybe they're bored with the rewards. Maybe they don't want the reward anymore. Um, so switching the reward to something that is more encouraging to them, more reinforcing to them, might be all you need to do. You may also need maybe more than just one method to encourage the desired behavior that you're going for. Maybe a token economy alone isn't enough and you need to pair it with another strategy. And something to keep in mind is that there are plenty of effective methods that don't work for everybody. Um, think about medicine. There are so many clinical studies and proven research and effective methods that really just don't work on certain people and you just have to find what does work for you. So once again, if I haven't said it enough, this video is simply my interpretation of all of the things that I have learned from the professionals. Um, it's what's worked for us. It's our modification of it. I am going to list all of my resources, the books I mentioned, um, and the Yale online course down below so you can hear it from the pros themselves and come to your own conclusions. I do hope this video has stirred up all sorts of excitement and encouraged you to try something new with your kids and I really have a strong feeling that you and your kids are going to love this method. That is all the fun I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed and we'll chat later. Bye!